Well, good morning to you. This is the Friday morning stream of World War Planes from the Noble Q. I forgot my own name now. I haven't woken up clearly. And as it says in the stream title, today we're going to be flying or trying to get through the American fighters that lead up to the F-86 uh, Sabre at Tier 10, starting at Tier 2. So we won't mess around. Let's get started with the P-23. And this is a bit of an outlier in the uh, line because it's the way, certainly the way I built it, it's highly manoeuvrable and you don't see this kind of manoeuvrability again until you get to the tier 10, as you will see during the stream. Tier 2, not much to say really. Light armament, reasonable speed, excellent manoeuvrability but not the best. Altitude performance is pretty good so we'll try and exploit that. Let's get into the game. And the reason we're doing this, good morning Cleeks, good morning Bulldozer, thank you for chatting, waving at you over the internet. <laughs> is because there's a, a special that's on, Prairie Legends, and you can get bonuses and discounts amongst other things on all of these American fighters from tier two up to tier 10. 50% in the case of the tiers two to seven and 30% in the case of the tiers eight to 10. So if you're grinding these, that's an, uh, a nice um, special for the weekend. There are some other benefits as well, which I won't go through, but you do have the opportunity, apart from mentioning one, you do have the opportunity to earn three special unique supplies if you have at least a tier eight and can do 100,000 hit points worth of uh, damage to aerial targets in any number of battles. I've done all those missions already, so we won't be talking about those again this morning. Well, at least I won't be. So a hearty good morning from the United Kingdom to you all. Very dark out there, nowhere near uh, even um, astronomical twilight, let alone a uh, civil twilight. Okay, this is a tier two battle, I would imagine. It is, and unsurprisingly, we have Sleepy Holy on the other side in a P-23. I wonder what he may be doing. Right, so on this particular map, I like to go to the airfield first. I think that's tactically and strategically more important than dashing for either of these two. And then I normally work my way to the centre. Let's get on with it. Now, you won't often see me flying aircraft like this, but uh, this is a kind of a turn in the water to see if there's a lot of interest in me flying uh, entire lines in the tech tree. So if I get a positive response to this, I may do this more often. What I will do is just edge the game sound down a little so I can hear myself speak over the noise of battle. Oops, slightly off target there. Don't really want to take a ram if I can avoid it. Select the one that's flying away from me as I'll get more time on target. There we go. Right. And I would suspect that uh, Sleepy Holy has done exactly the same as me on the other side of the map. So we'll probably encounter him in the middle. And then we'll see what kind of a setup he's got, whether he catches me by surprise, vice versa. The mistakes are all there, waiting to be made. Oops, not paying attention to what's in front of me. Okay, and there's Sleepy Holy. Now if he's watching, I've no doubt that no, he's not watching. He hasn't seen me, so that's probably going to be unfortunate for him unless he's really well built or a really skilled pilot. Oh, he's got decent maneuverability. Very good maneuverability, actually. I suspect he's just used a consumable. Uh, 
I seem to have him now. Oops, one more. Please don't fly to that. That actually may go wider than I wanted to. Yep, yeah. okay. So he's built for maneuverability as well, and I'm pretty sure he had a consumable on there, which I activated after him, so I, I was able to uh, eventually outturn him towards the end. But uh, somebody who knows what he's doing. That's nice. Uh, Demon's got a good big hit point pull, so it's going to take a little while to knock this down. Let's go and try and establish dominance. Let's try not to be where Sleepy Holy expects to find me. And in fact, he's actually gone here. He's avoided me. <laughs> Oh well. Well, neither of us should have a consumable in place. And he's going to try something different. Which good for him. And actually, he's forced me to crash because there's a bank there. <laughs> well done, sir. I'll give you that. If that had been flat ground, I would have been all right. I wasn't aware there was a bank there. Good afternoon, Grant. How are you? Is it worth spawning here to kill that? No, it's a heavy. Okay. We're actually in slightly precarious position here. They've got two sectors that are entirely healthy. We've only got... So we've got one sector that's more than halfway lost, and another which is on the way to being lost. Maybe I should have gone for that heavy. What I'm going to try and do is take this. That should be discouraging for him, although he may not know. He might guess that I've just activated him consumable there before he could plus the fact he was on lower health than me okay so we've got that which is good because it looked like we're about to lose our air field to that heavy that's slightly annoying also slightly surprising that the heavy can win that on its own I need to get rid of this demon that seems to be doing good work against my bots. And there you go. So, in conclusion, the way I've built this aircraft, there's not much to see here. I've built it as a standard uh, maneuverable, maneuverable plane. There's nothing exciting about my build, as you can see. Sleepy Hollow, Sleepy Holy, I keep calling him Hollow. Sleepy Holy has been able to do exactly the same. I could have done with a critical there. I'm trying to undercut his turn with a bit of yaw. I need to be careful about the ground at some point. There you go, you see the yaw kicking in. Let's see if he panics. Oh, he's got it well built. Nice. Good use of the bridge. Well played. I have to be a bit careful here, actually. I have to watch the yaw. The yaw take, tends to take you naturally into the uh, downwards. I haven't quite figured out yet how to apply both yaw and shoot. Is he going to get bored? Is he going to... Well, I just need to get a little bit more lead here. Use a bit of boost, a bit of your. I 
That's a bit of a nuisance because he's got a friend and I haven't. Uh, sorry, very sterile battle. We've cancelled each other out, basically. And he's actually outturned me, so he must have used his consumable again. So let's now use mine. Oops! And I've just messed up my yaw. Just got away with it. Unfortunately, that's now handed him a considerable advantage. Put the yaw on for too long. Though we've got the battle, and I've held him out. There we go. So, as you can see, he had exactly the same build as me. Um, I should have shot him just now, unfortunately. Just as I was getting the advantage, I thought it was a loss. And uh, I actually overcooked the turn and had to avoid the ground. But as you can see, that was a highly maneuverable tier two aircraft. So let's go straight in and have a look at the tier three and compare it to the tier two. And there'll be quite a difference as you'll see. Hello, Stairway. Good morning to you. Interestingly, once I'd recovered from the error, I was actually beginning to outturn him again. So that yaw does just give you a, a significant difference. So what I'm employing in turns at the moment, apart from alternating on boost, is pick up, flaps, sometimes a bit of air brake, sometimes a bit of boost, and then I'm throwing in a little bit of yaw. I'm still learning how to get that yaw in effectively. As you saw in that final battle, uh, I overdid the yaw and I threw myself off the course that I wanted to be and gave, him, gave my opponent an advantage, which I was beginning to reel in, but it could have cost me my aircraft. Okay, so aircraft details. Let's just stick those up. Let's get the tier three up. And this is the Hawk. And immediately I want you to draw your attention and this kind of maneuverability, which has gone down quite considerably, is what you can now expect from here on in up until certainly the tier eight, um, even the tier nine, although the tier nine is beginning to um, uh, restore some maneuverability. And then it's not until the tier 10 that you have a fully maneuverable aircraft again. So these from tier three to tier eight, certainly even tier nine, need to be played as high energy fighters. Keep them high, keep them fast, try and stay off the flaps, try and hunting groups, try and dive on isolated targets, hit them with the Daka Daka machine guns and then boost away before they can react and shoot you. If you engage in turn fights in these things, well, unless it's uh, ground attackers, bombers, heavies, you're going to lose. So you need to be disciplined. Try not to get into a turn fight, otherwise you will come unstuck. Armament has gone up quite considerably. It's nice. Survivability a little bit, as you would expect. The altitude performance has gone up uh, a bit to 10,000, uh, sorry, 3,937 maximum optimum altitude. So about uh, 700, 600, 700 feet, something like that. And without further ado, let's get into the Hawk 75M and let's try and fly this as a high energy fighter. Got a pilot with some skills. We'll put on aerodynamics expert immediately. Uh, I could enhance the equipment. I probably won't. We'll just fly it as it is. Good morning, Viking. So looking ahead to the tier five, P P40, bulldozer is already... Yes, although funny enough, BHR Penguin, we're going to go away from dogfighting now and use the style that I call high energy fighting. Some people call this boom and zoom, but I think they're missing the boom component. The guns aren't good enough. Um, a root, true boomer zoomer to me can almost knock your aircraft down in one pass and then fly off and do it again to someone else. Uh, bulldozer, yeah, P40. Looking ahead to the tier five uh, is a real sweet spot in the line. If properly, properly flown, it can be very good. Now, to be fair, I haven't been flying a lot of high energy fighters recently, so it may take me a little while to get my eye in. Also, there's a bit of an interesting period between tier six and tier eight, where I'll be flying Mustangs. Um, all much of a muchness, in my opinion. Obviously, they get faster and more powerful. Uh, armament is interesting. We'll discuss that when we get to the Tier 6. Uh, sorry about the queue times. If 
very long queue time. So while we're just waiting, um, here's the uh, bonuses and discounts, the Prairie Legends uh, weekend event. I still haven't got a game, by the way, so you're not missing anything. And that's the F86 Sabre that's shown in the uh, photograph. And here are your discounts. 50% from tiers 2 to tier 7, and 30% from tiers 8 to tier 10. Okay, so we're now going into game, so I'm going to switch that off. Got a tier 3 game, lucky me. It's all bot, so I get to embarrass myself by losing. And I'm not joking, the last two all bot games I've had, I've actually lost. Just depends on what they decide to do, whether they're switched on or whether they're all still having their morning cuppers and a bit of breakfast. So I'm roughly, as probably nearer this command centre, as you probably all know by now. The command centres are by far and away the most important sectors on this map. Humans regularly make the dis um, mistake of diving for the centre because it's the nearest sector. Uh, and then wonder why they can't hold it as the bomber flights come in and pulverise it from the command centres. So we're going to try and get some altitude. We'll take this into the yellow uh, region, which is over here. I have a colorized HUD, as you know, which is a part of a mod that I operate. Hacker mod. Although the links don't work, I'm not sure whether I can find a way to make that. You can find all the mods, links to the, all the mods that I use down below the video, down below the stream, if you're interested. And I should really look at my chat. Especially as my good friend Buck has arrived. Hello, Buck. Good evening. How are you? <laughs> High energy flatulence. Um, I think you may be on the wrong stream, but although I suspect you think you're on exactly the right stream. And hello, Marangana. Right, so I'm just going into a sector, but I do want to point out to all of you who are watching, in case you don't know, both Buck and Buck was streaming yesterday. Both Buck and Marangana are very fine streamers, so I'm going to put a shout out to them when I get a chance. And I strongly recommend you go and follow them and get yourself a really good time. So I want to chase the heavy because this is not a maneuverable fighter. So when I press the X key to, uh, in this plane, I'll be looking for the second target, the one that's second closest to me on the assumption I can't get to the one that's nearest to me because it will outturn me. There we go. So, second target is actually the ground attacker. So there's a... T Let's just use that yaw to sling the turn around a bit more. Got the wing. Bit more yaw just at the start of the turn to kick it in a bit quicker, more quickly. Job's good on. skill has got a lot of HP, so I can feast, since I don't need to worry about this outturning me. Excellent. Right. Let's go now, I could sit and defend, but I don't really want to defend until such time as we've got two sectors under our belt, so... Just see feast on the ground attacker. And that's true. Yeah, he did move the opposite way to the way that would have seemed natural to me. I've got something on my tail, so I'm going to ask for help. Get out of here. Tough aircraft, so you can indulge in a ram or two. Now, I shouldn't do this, but I'm just going to try. And I've got the luck because I've got a friend. Of course, this being the tier two, so had it just been me and him, I would have had to try and fly away. I wouldn't have had the opportunity. Now, do we need to go and defend? 
Mm, don't like a heavy kicking around there, so I am going to go and try and use my altitude against it. I'll gather boost while I can. This gives me the opportunity. Uh, get a room, you two. And there's a shout out to Big Lot and the Exinius Mangana. And as I say, if you go and follow them, you'll find excellent streams and a lot of fun. That's made the right decision to come here. Choose the guns to try and bring down this FW57. And I'm going to address the multi rolls that are coming in before they address me if I can. Skewer. It's far away. I don't know what it is, but it's far away. It's the P. I may want to switch targets here in a moment. Yes, I do want to switch targets. P26. I can knock this down more quickly and then I can put my give my full attention to the skewer. Okay, so I'm using the good weaponry to good effect. This could be a rocketeer problem, so. Now I shouldn't, but I've gone altitude and I'm dropping, so I'm getting gravity into the turn. Unfortunately, as a bot, I can get away with that now. Against a human player at higher tiers, I would have had to put a lot more distance in. Or possibly even just flown up and then flown away. Here, where I'm fighting against bots, I can take uh, I can take the Mickey a bit, potentially. I don't like this heavy flying around. It caused us a lot of trouble here previously, so I'm going to see what I can do now. And uh, without really trying particularly hard, I've racked up eleven thousand personal points. This is probably going to take up to twelve thousand, provided he doesn't shoot me down with his gunner. Meat and drink for the hawk. You're most welcome, Marangana. Most welcome. I've had lots of fun hours in your streams. And I still haven't told you how to say the Scots Gaelic. <laughs> I'm not going to either. And there's a reason for that. Let's try using the yaw. I don't know how to say it myself. <laughs> Just for you, I will find out. Okay, so we've got supremacy. I'm now going to go in and try and farm as much damage as I can. Climbing in on an isolated target. Something to remember for future battles. Ground attacker goes down. This is a good air after to take down ground attackers. Just put the nose up slightly because I want to slow the turn down, actually. In this case, because I want to get a little bit more distance. And again. And it's all done. Not going to get any more. Or maybe just a few, few points more. There we go. 16,000 points in the Hawk 75M. Not a bad aircraft if flown properly. If you fly it as a turn fighter, you will come badly unstuck. That's the key lesson of the Hawk 75 and indeed. All the way up to the Sabre, I would suggest you bear that in mind on this line. Uncle Salty. <laughs> Are you Salty? Hello. So do call me Q. Most people do, although Noble is lo lovely as well. Nice to have you along and good morning to you. So... That was the tier three. Without further ado, as we're on a tight schedule, let's look at the tier four, the P36. I did not. In fact, I'm a relative newbie to World of Warplanes and flight games. I'd only started, this, this is my first and only flight game so far. Well, that's not quite true, but um, I'll come on to that in a moment. Um, and this only came out, this version of the game only came out in uh, 2017, October 2017. Now, I was lying there. I did actually play a little bit of Aces of Europe back in the day, ooh, way back in the 90s, uh, before I stopped playing games and uh, tried to uh, do real life things. 
which was boring, so I went back to games eventually. We're coming to the P36. Let's have a quick look and see how it stacks up against the tier three. Let's bring that to the middle. Slight increase in armament. What have we got? Again, more machine guns. Expect that all the way through the line. More of them. More speed, as you would expect for a tier four. Pretty much the same maneuverability the way I've built this, and I've built it for speed. And you probably have done that on most of the aircraft, um, all the way up to the tier 10. Altitude performance, a fairly big kick up, about a thousand feet. And again, what we're going to be trying to do is use the uh, machine guns in a high energy flying style, high altitude, keeping the speed up and seeing what we can do. And from here on in, it starts getting a bit tough. If you're not disciplined in these aircraft and you come across experienced players and you try and turn with them and they're in something, well, particularly a Japanese fighter, a Spitfire, potentially you will meet those um, in this aircraft. Uh, you're going to come unstuck. Try and keep it fast. Try and keep it high. Try and pick your targets carefully. Try and stay as part of the combat group if you possibly can. Yes, you're now making me wish that I had played it to uh, Uncle Salty. I wonder if I can dig out a, a copy. Probably not. Aces High. I think Aces High was in the same series as Aces of Europe. Uh, Bulldozer. Uh, I'm, I really enjoyed that game for a long while. It would look horrible now, I have to say. Obviously, the graphics have moved on immensely. So thank you to all of you who've come along this morning, including an old friend of mine. And I'm not going to drop the, the cloak of an anonymity, but uh, a good friend of Buck's I know as well happens to be here this morning. Special wave to you. Hope everything is well with you. And no, I don't mean Marangana. Or in fact, I think the said person has actually now departed, so I may have been too late for that. Right, so we're going over the plant. We're going to try and keep it high. I haven't actually looked to see. It is a tier four game, P36 against me, so there's going to be an interesting battle. Weaving to avoid the flak, and I'm really looking for the bombers or the heavies up here. And there's a Blenheim coming straight for me. So I'll ignore the bombers. Oh, and this is not looking good already. It looks like uh, our team is making a hash of taking this. Going to try and get the blending, blending down. He's flying straight, which is a bit of a worry. And it's a bit of a worry because it means that anything can get on my tail. No, let's go back. So we have actually managed to turn the plant back. And what I've done is I'm not chasing the bomber. I've turned towards the one that's incoming. I know it seems fairly obvious, but you can get yourself trapped into chasing an aircraft you can't catch up because the bombers are so fast in this game. In fact, personally, I think they're too fast. There we go. Pop that bomber out. So now we can go to the other one. Excellent. Okay, so what looked like uh, an unpleasant situation at the beginning has resolved itself satisfactorily. We've knocked down the bombers, we've knocked down a heavy, and we've contributed to taking the plant. And unfortunately, strategically on this map, there isn't much more to do except just make sure we hold on to it. I'm going to go down for the heavy who's flying low. That's inadvisable. So many people make this mistake. I'm going to call it a mistake. It's a mistake for newer players. An elite player might make it work because they can see the game in a clearer fashion that allows them to be able to do this and find an escape route. Most heavy players who do what that one's just done will come across in exactly the way that that one has. Uh, so if you're new, new or relatively new to the game, I strongly recommend you keep your heavies high, clear out the top, and then and only then go down when you need to clear out GAAs or an odd aircraft. If you don't, you're likely to have um, the experience that the FW57 player has just had. And certainly I would, so I still keep my heavies high generally. I still don't fly low interceptors. That's a bomber over there, so I can reasonably safely take this one on. 
being pelted by the bomber. Now, do I want to chase him? I haven't got much boost. I think the answer is probably no. Here's the P-36. I'm going to try and catch him unawares. And that's exactly what happened. Still being shot by the bomber, and I've lost quite a lot of speed because I've put my nose up, so I'm going to turn away. I'm going to stay up rather than go down for the heavy because it's likely the bomber will be coming back and indeed that's exactly what's happening. And I'm not going to put the nose up and bleed speed. I'm actually going to accelerate through this turn. Try and keep up with the bomber. That's been done successfully and now I'll shoot it down with a bit of luck. Job's a good one. I must stop saying that. And as we turn there's another bomber incoming. Rinse and repeat. So what I haven't done a lot of in this plane is attack other fighters. Now, if there was BF-109 Bs, E's around, P-36C, I have attacked that once, then I would have to do more fighting against fighters, but I've quite deliberately chosen not to engage in that sort of battle in this plane. If I can, and I'm allowed to, and it's winning the game, I will keep on taking bombers, taking out heavies, and trying to keep my speed high, as well as my altitude high. And a fairly regulation victory for the tier four, the P-36. Not a bad aircraft. I, I, wish, I wish it was a little bit faster, but it's perfectly adequate if you know how to fly it. And a lot of people fly it a lot better than I do. You must keep your wits about you in these aircraft and be try and be aware of what's around you at all times, because if you're in a bad situation, um, your main means of escape is probably a dive and boost. Hello, freelancer. Okay, so this game, I don't know how familiar you are with this game, Uncle Salty, perhaps you'd like to indicate, but there are quite a number of world iconic World War II aircraft, mostly at the mid-tiers. They begin to run out around about Tier 8. Um, there is an ME262 at Tier 8, though. Um, and I think partly for that reason, a lot of play people stay around the mid-tiers. Uh, that said, there's a lot of all paper planes as well, such as, I'm looking at you, XP-54, Okay, so that was the P-36. Let's just get the aircraft details up. We'll now move straight to one that bulldozed the trail just a few minutes ago, the Tier 5. And I think, without a doubt, this is a sweet spot in the line. If you know how to fly high en the high energy style that I've been describing. So your armament's gone up to 12. It's still, of course, machine guns, but six of them, 12.7 millimeters. Airspeed has gone up considerably. Cruise speed is now 258 as opposed to 245. Boost speed 338, which is well worth uh, 88. Look at that boost speed. And here we're coming into um, uh, the situation where the boost is critical. You need to make sure you've got engine cooling on these aircraft so you get to your extra 10 seconds. Maneuverability pretty much staying the same. This is not a turn fighter. Don't fly it as a turn fighter unless you want to be sent back to the hangar frequently. Altitude performance has increased somewhat, just over 300 feet. So the, uh, in the right battle, the P-40 is a really good aircraft. And we're going to do much the same to begin with. We're going to try and keep it high. We'll be looking for bombers and heavies. Try and keep it fast catch people unawares, hit them with the machine guns and probably boost away. So just while we're waiting, we'll just go back to that uh, Firefox page and just look, look over what the missions are. Okay, that's not what I expected to see. Because I've got the wrong thing up, of course. So your missions. You can get a piece of equipment uh, if you do work on the uh, the tiers two to four. And you'll need to destroy 40 enemy aircraft. Enemy aircraft, that doesn't include air defense aircraft. And some frames, so, okay, that's nice. 
Again, another piece of equipment, a gun sight for the tiers five to seven and some different uh, parts. Not too many of them, but it's free stuff. Capture points this time though. Uh, and here's the one that possibly, if you have a tier eight or at least, then this is the one that most people will be interested in because you get these unique supply crates. I opened a mine up yesterday because I've got most of the content in the game. I got stuff that wasn't very interesting, but these are nice missions. And then you've got the discounts, as I've said. There's also a small bonus for people who shoot down an American aircraft, a little bit of bonus to um, crew experience. So yeah, you may find that you're getting focused a bit. And we're top tier, that's good. However, we are also on an asymmetric map at the wrong side. I'm going to fly straight to the garrison. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that my bots can take the command center. We've got a KI-45. I can outmaneuver that, although it's highly maneuverable. I need to be careful about getting in front of it, obviously. And the same applies to the black gun on the BF-110C6. We have a bow fighter. Hmm. Quite an interesting mix. They have two heavies. I have a high altitude fighter. Might work in my favor. And I should say that what we have here is a Turkish livery. I can't remember what this gives. This will either give 5% aircraft experience or 20% crew experience. I think it's probably the former. There you go. I think, I think this may be the only Turkish livery in the game, actually. No, I think there's one other. I'll, I won't check on stream, but I think there may be one other camouflage that I've got that's Turkish. And there are some Czech, Polish, Hungarian, Romanian liveries in the game as well. Okay, I'm going to need some help from the enemy here. What I'm going to need is for one of them to die. What have we got here? What have we got? What have we got? It's all down low. Okay. I'm going to size up the bow fights first, I think. Set him on fire. Daka 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 the machine guns. Funny enough, I don't want to concentrate on the ground attacks at the moment. I haven't got big enough guns to take them down quickly. I want to try and knock air defence aircraft down quickly. Try and turn this into our favour. I need to concentrate on the fighter while he's not concentrating on me. It's actually a multi-roll. And that's actually one I can now turn, so that was quite handy. And now I should be able to shoot down the ground attacker. Okay, that went a lot better than I felt it might. Use the yaw to smooth out that turn. Oh, got a little bit fixated there. I could have easily flown into a pylon or something closer to the ground than I ought to have been. Try to lay off the boost here. I want to keep it. Okay. Now, here's a challenge. We have the bullying. Fortunately, he's not looking at me, so I'm going to sweep up and behind him. But now here's the challenge, because he should be able to out me. I need a wing or something. What did I get? I got a wing, so I am going to try and use my yaw. And he's straightened up on your way, so I'm lucky. But at the first hint of trouble in the turn there, I would have been using my boost to fly away. I need to be careful I don't get shot down by that ground attack behind this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to bail out... And you can see the Grand Attacker is trying to shoot me, so I'm going to use the altitude advantage that I can get from this aircraft. Switch my attention to the multi-roll. Just a tad of gore in there to tighten the turn. And now we'll shoot this multi uh, Grand Attacker. So you saw I perceived the threat there. And it's always generally a good idea to take the rearmost aircraft in a chain. Here we go our first encounter with one of the heavies. Now, does he know what he's doing? 
Well, that looks like a turn to me, so I would say immediately no. Let's just concentrate on that, dispose of him. Good job he didn't blap me, Fobos. He came in without me seeing him. And for the second time, this bot boomerang uh, doesn't concentrate on me, which is to my advantage. I'm on the alert all the time here for situations where I need to fly away quickly, get distance. I think I can ignore the I-17. Let's go for the rearmost of these two aircraft again on the same principle. Funny enough, it's exactly the same order as well. If I get in front of this one by trying to shoot the one that's ahead of him, he may very well shoot me down. And plus the fact if the other, if the other one has a, a rear gunner, I'll be getting shot potentially by two aircraft at the same time, which is something you want to avoid. Let's try and get some altitude and flip over the top. Not in any rush here. I can take my time about this. P-43 is going to fall to my guns, I think. And there we go. So I've been allowed to dominate this sector. Battles are going very smoothly this morning. They will get harder, I'm sure. And this time the order is different. The slower Bisha is behind this, so I will actually address this, but I'll keep an eye out for the Bisha. That's a bomb crap. So the Bisha is now approaching from behind me. And I'm aware of it. Watch out the pylon. Something behind the Bisha as well, which is the P-43 again. We'll address that first. And oh well, the, the KI has made a decent fist of it, but he hasn't fought in this sector, so I've been largely untroubled by the humans in this game. Just the C-6 came in once. I flew away before I got into a potential bomb and that there's something on me. And it's not paying me any attention again. Is that the boomerang by any chance? No, it's the I-17. Okay. Well, that's the first... Well, that would have been the first aircraft to take. And there you saw again. I was able to fly around relatively unmolested. Uh, and even though I haven't got high manoeuvrability because I knew what my opponents were doing, my boss opponents for the most part, and what sort of aircraft they were in, I was able to keep the aircraft low. But at every point in every engagement there, I was looking for signs of trouble, being outturned, being jumped on by two aircraft, and I had my finger ready over the boost to fly away, either down or up, probably up in this case, because I was low most of the time. But it's a good aircraft, the P-40. Um, this is a really good introduction to high energy fighting, in my opinion, um, and also machine gun play. Hello, uh, Edward Swenson. Thank you very much for chatting. Um, skills, some. Experience, loads. Um, as I say on my YouTube channel, and I haven't actually uh, mentioned that I have a YouTube channel and there are some newer people here. So perhaps you would like to check my offline content. Oh, sorry, it is my online. Ooh, really? Looks like my bot may be misbehaving this morning. I'll do that manually. Just give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. I'll have to go and investigate that. So, 
Sorry about the link not coming up automatically, but you can find my YouTube channel there. Yes. It's been a while since you've been here, Marcellus, but thank you for that contribution. Yeah, it is relatively robust. You're quite right. Let's just have a quick look. Can't spend too much time on it, but that's why you can get up amongst the heavies and the bombers and shoot them down. That's really what this aircraft does really well. Uh, you need to pick off your fighter targets carefully. Um, otherwise, you could get outmaneuvered. So good point brought out by Marcellus there. Thank you. Um, having said that, if you're in the wrong place, even 250 hit points doesn't go very far. If that C6, for instance, had been able to lay a shot on me, that 250 points would have evaporated very quickly. So let's quickly get up into the tier six. I can see time is against me. So, and we're into the first of the iconic World War II Mustangs. Now, Big Buck has explained here previously the origin story of the P-51A Mustang. Suffice to say, and I'm gonna quote him a little bit here, the UK came to the US and went to North American and asked for them to get a license from the manufacturer of Curtis, of course, of the P-40 to build uh, these things under license for the UK. But instead of getting shitty, and I'm using Buck's terminology here, shitty Warhawks, um, North American proposed an entirely new fighter. Uh, that, that was the P-51A. To cut a long story short, once an RAF test pilot had recommended that a Merlin was put into this, the iconic World War II fighter began its uh, story. Buck, if I got any of that wrong, please do correct me. Um, okay, I'm going to disagree with that, Marcellus, but I think you're not far off. Um, I've taken down, um, sorry, trying to deal with several things at once. No can do. Too old. So we'll just look at survivability again. Gone up a bit, 280. Now, I want to draw your attention here. You're going to be possibly disappointed when you come to the P-51A after the glory that is the P-40. Look at the gun armament. Your cumulative damage has gone down. You've only got four machine guns. You'd go from six to four, which is a bit of a mystery to me. So the P-51A really does need to be flown well to make an impact because it's actually, at least in terms of firepower, a weaker aircraft than the preceding tier five. There you go. Really important point. Airspeed, of course, has gone up. Let's just have a quick look at those figures. Cruise speed 294, 439, so considerably faster. Maneuverability, ah, the way I've built it, slightly more, but still a speed build. <laughs> There's not much difference. So it's still a high energy style. Altitude performance, as you would expect, has also gone up. And one of your favorite tactics with the Mustangs is to actually uh, cause people to stall out. Although stalling is now not as bad for an aircraft as it used to be. I wish they'd put it back to the way it was before. And you can do that from 6,234 feet, optimum altitude. So now we're gonna to have to be careful about flying this aircraft. American fighters, tier six, P-51A. We've got the Polish livery on this. That's quite handsome actually, in my opinion. Kind of meaty looking aircraft as well. I've regularly heard Americans say this is beautiful. To British eyes, my British eyes, this doesn't look beautiful. I think it's muscular, which is as good in my opinion, if not better. But I've already warned you about the firepower on this aircraft. I'd like to have another skill point because I'd like to aerodynamics there, but I think I'm going to stick with the two engine gurus here. And off we go. So Marcellus, P40, definitely a candidate for best in the line. Um, I have to say I much prefer the F86A, which is the tier 10. Uh, but that is an outlier. That goes back to the kind of thing you're seeing with the tier two P23. So with a bit of luck, we will get there and I'll be able to show you um, why it's so different. What happens is from the tier eight Mustang to the tier nine, you're beginning to see a transition from an out and out high energy fighter to a fighter that can do virtually everything that fighters uh, can do except hit hard. It hits plenty well enough. So the FJ-1, that tier nine, begins to become more maneuverable, but not particularly so. The F-86A, on, uh, on the other hand, is highly maneuverable as well as being very quick. And in my opinion, it's the ultimate anti-fighter fighter in the game. But 
I wouldn't argue strongly against uh, Mark Ellis's opinion that the P40 is a really good high energy fighter. So the P51A, we can outturn the S199, we will not be outturning the XP55, and that's also a very fast aircraft as well, so that's a real deadly danger. They've also got a Spitfire. We have P51, an ME410, and a Hurricane 2D. We're going to have to play well to win this. And I'm going to go to the command center and I'm going to go at altitude, but there's lots of threats here. Really going to have to keep my wits about me. The XP55 in particular is going to be a problem. The Spitfire conceivably could be, although I'd like to think I could fly above that. So we're at altitude, we're approaching the first command center. Got a couple of heavies with me. Let's dive. You will see some red stuff appearing about there very shortly. And I'm not going to continue to turn flight with him, I'm going to go fly away. I'm going to try and chase the others. Oh, there were two of them there. I actually shot in between them because I didn't realise. I'm actually put the air brake on to try and stay behind this particular boomerang. And I'm going to tailpipe this. I'm going to go up and flip over. It got underneath me, unfortunately, but that's all right. Okay. And now we've got a problem because I'm low. And I'm going to fly straight past the Spitfire. And the XP-55 as well. This is not somewhere I want to be anymore. And the problem is, I'm not sure I can get away from the XP-55. Okay, I've used all my boost. We're now in the lap of the gods. What I have done is at least I've dragged them away from the command center. So what the two fighters have done smartly is go to their command center and take it. Now the XP-55 is not giving up. However, I have to turn because I'm... Ah, you see, this is the problem. Unfortunately, I'm now in prime position to be shot down. The XP-55 did actually give up in the end but he forced me into a heavy fighter. I've lost all my health. Well, just have to give up for the moment. I need to try and recover health. Let's see if we can take out this tornado. Oh no, I thought I was going to crash into the uh, air defence aircraft there. And what we'll need to do is try and go and assist at a plant in a moment. The two command centres have been taken by the fighters. Yeah. Once we've got rid of this tornado, that's where I'm going. I'm not going to hang around at the airfield because we will have incoming fighters. And I'm low. I need to try and get some altitude. We haven't got either of the plants either. Oh lord. Okay, I did wonder if this was going to be a difficult game, and it looks like uh, the enemy are fully on top. They've taken both command centers, and we are nowhere near taking either of the plants. In fact, we look like we're going to lose both of them. Uh, our friend in the ME210, 410 rather, Hurricane 2D is being severely outclassed in this game. Now, I should be able to outmaneuver the S19. And now he's going to be able to turn his attention to me, which is frustrating.
use the yule badly there. Okay, I'm not able to out to him. Let's put some distance between me and him and then address him again. Oh, lucky shot's taken my pilot out, which is really frustrating. I'll just fly away from him. And it looks like the AA is going to shoot me down. Until I've got my pilot back, I've no intention of playing against it, this him. Oh, well, I trailed it at the start. I did say that I, it didn't. The the aircraft, we'd have to all play well to be able to win this battle. And um, we're we've just been hopelessly outclassed. I'm going to fly across to the command center to see what we can do there. There's no point in me shooting down the S one nine nine where he is. Is there? It is pointless. Yeah, uh, the poor old Hurricane 2D. Actually, he's done as much as me, to be fair, so who am I to speak? But at no point have we been able to assert dominance anywhere. I have to congratulate the Spitfire and the XP-55. They flew together. They took both of these important sectors. One of them I could have contested. I can't fight, but fight against both of them. You saw that the XP-55 used his speed and everything he had to try and catch me over here. Um, he didn't, although he got the unintended benefit of forcing me into a heavy that I didn't notice, so I lost all my health. But what he did do was he forced me away from these sectors, at which point I noticed that my team had also made no con uh, uh, progress towards taking either of these two plants, at which point you're pretty much um, smashed. So, the first bad battle of the morning, uh, what you learn from that is that unless you've got a, a reasonable team around you, the P-51A is not a game carrier. I couldn't even outturn the well-built uh, SV1, S-199, and I didn't have the firepower to take him down in my first pass on him when he wasn't, well, actually he was aware of me, he managed to kill the bomber before I got to him. So, yeah, difficult aircraft, craft, um, don't expect to do particularly well in this plane unless you've got a good team around you. So let's now move up to the tier seven. Which is the P-51D. And things begin to get better. As you can see, the gun armament has improved significantly. You've now got six machine guns 312 DPS. Survivability is still much the same. 300 hit points as opposed to 280. Airspeed, again, a significant improvement. 330 to 450, the way I've built it. And again, quite a significant jump in altitude performance as well. So from the relative weakness of the P-51A, we're now beginning to get into a much stronger aircraft, the P-51D. However, you will fly it much the same way. And this is a chrome livery, which confers extra airspeed for me. It's cruise speed, I should say, plus 3% on the cruise speed. And this is the first of the bubble ca canopies. And that's a really handsome aircraft, in my opinion. Not beautiful, but definitely handsome. And let's uh, see what we can do. Now, again, you need your team to play well, but this is much more of a threat than the P-51A. The P-51A is probably the weak spot in the line, I would say. Okay, so Marcellus, what you're expressing there is um, a common complaint of people who don't like machine guns. So what's the balancing factor? Machine guns have got relatively low DPS. However, they've got high burst length. Um, I don't have a problem shooting things down, for instance, the F-86A, but a lot of people really don't like the big uh, losing the big hits that cannons give them. Um, it, it is an acquired taste, um, I would say, and certainly f flitting about between a, a machine gun aircraft, the American fighters, and a cannon aircraft can cause you all sorts of lead problems for a couple of games. Well, I may be going to the garrison on this map, folks. On top tier, we've got an F-4U against us, an LA-5, 
very good roll rate, medium altitude aircraft, uh, and we have an XP54 as well, which is specialised. So it's the first one I've seen this morning, so I'm not going to complain too much. What we're going to do is we're going to go straight to the middle garrison here um, and try and secure it for no other reason than, than if you have the middle garrison, your team can fly from one part of the map to the other uh, unhindered. It's a bit more of a problem if you don't have the middle garrison. I haven't got any turn, human at turn fighters against me. I do need to be aware of this bot. That could be a real problem. Oh no, that's a one. That's a heavy. That's all right. I thought that was the uh, two. The highly manoeuvrable two with the big cannons. <coughs> Pardon me. Right, so we'll look for the heavies. Try and establish what pattern they are in. One's down low, so they're both, I think, flying at me. Not too surprising. Just evade, come round, and then try and set a chase down and try and set up on it. Okay, 102 is flying towards me, so it will stay nearer to me for longer. Plus the fact it's more points. Oops. We'll continue to look for the heavy. Try and gather some boost. That heavy is going to get shot down by a P-51A, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Let's go and take on the bomber. Specialised aircraft 10,000 feet away there. flying away. That just took me off the heavy long enough. Still, we'll try and hunt it down. The flying brick. Don't want to get in front of one of these things, but uh, in all other areas, you're fine. There we go. Let's go back to the middle. There's the human. Oh no, it's not the human player. Just a bit too much yaw there. I kicked slightly above the aircraft. Could be a grand attack below. What's above? Bomber. How many have we got on the grand attack? Actually, nobody, so let's go and take the grand attack and send some down here. Of course, he shoots at my engine. Oh, I need it back instantly because we've got incoming. There is the human player. Yeah, that's the right thing. He carried on running. But I should be able to hunt him down now. Okay, but we now need to take another sector. Got a bit of a lead. Okay, let's just try and clear this one out and then go and consider what we do. So let's go to this sector. And ask for help. I'm not going to be allowed to go. I think he's actually sizing me up. Yeah, he was close enough to be a problem, so now we'll go.
rat, go away. Ah, four sectors now. Team is contriving to lose a, a battle that they were well on top in. And there's an awful lot of red here. I've got real problems if I'm going to take the sector. I did elf ask for help. I hope I get some. on me before I can get a bead on them. So I have to evade. Go for the one that dived. And it looks like nobody else in my team think, thinks that sectors are important. Disappointing really considering we started off so well and then suddenly we seem to have lost the uh, impetus. Uh, what have we got? Yeah, the, XP, oh, the XP-54 is having an atrocious game. I'm going to let the Grand Attacker go. I want to take him, but we haven't got time. We need to try and get Sectors under control. He's not taking damage very quickly, but he is taking damage, so I'm going to keep at it. Okay, so that's one set. We de definitely need this set. What else can we do? What else is around? 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. Let's go for this one. I'm actually too fast, too fast. Come on, slow down. Oh. Something I didn't really feel I had time to do, but I've had to break off. Okay, diving attack on the P40s. And that's a classic uh, version one of the game tactic, which would have been much more powerful. Uh, just as we get the four sectors, we lose one. Oh, so we need to take this one. So my team all heads off to defend a sector when we're so far behind. So I believe it's my boost. Oh, damn crap, the heavy decided to turn for me. Oh. Well, that was a calculated gamble. I was hoping the heavy would just fly straight on. Um, he didn't. It's a bot. I should have known better. And I've just thrown this game. I should have killed the heavy when I had the chance. I didn't have the patience. I wanted to get across here. And as I say, I've just thrown a game that we should have won. Without the heavy there, I would have been able to go there. I'm pretty confident I would have taken that sector. And I think we would have won this game. With the heavy, I took the chance. Wrong decision. The heavy just came around and uh, managed to blap me. And we've well and truly lost this game now. These two won't survive much longer, I'm fairly sure. Okay, so time is pressing on. You saw that the... Um, I hope you saw the uh, Tier 7 is a far more powerful aircraft than the Tier 6. Um, and we're back into a good place. Uh wasn't for my lousy decision towards the end. I actually think that would have been a, a, a winning battle. I just took the chance on that heavy, and I'm, I'm really quite disappointed. I should have taken the time uh, to take him out. We did have the time, but I was impatient, which is one of my failings in this game. Well, 
No, I don't think so, um, Cleeks. I would disagree. I think certainly the jump from the Tier 6 to the Tier 7, the improvement in the armament is considerable and noticeable. Um, so I don't agree with that. Uh, I think that, again, that's a comment born of, I don't like machine guns, really. Okay, so the Tier 8. And what do we get? Well, another fairly good increase in uh, DPS, 390. And bearing in mind you've got long burst on these things, so that's 390 per second for a, a considerable number of seconds. Might have a look on 3D game models in a moment, uh, just to go and see what the burst length is, if I can determine it, or overheat time, I should say. Increase in range as well, probably worth knowing. Uh, survivability has stepped up slightly, 340 hit points. You're a whole tier higher though, so probably won't feel much difference. Again, a significant increase in airspeed, as you would see. <clears throat> Boost speed, 488. Keep an eye on the dive speed. The dive speeds on these are very, very good. Maneuverability. Now, this one has stepped up in maneuverability a bit, and that's because I've got extra slots on it, and I have actually put a lightweight power unit in. So here's where you can start restoring a little bit of maneuverability if you want. Interestingly, I'm still on the tier seven, aren't I? No, I'm not. Am I on the tier seven? No, I am on the tier seven. There we go. Got the right one in the background now. Maneuverability there. It's beginning to edge up. Still not a turn fighter, but that's certainly a handy uh, increase. But it's been largely predicated on the fact that I've got a lightweight uh, wing frame on this aircraft. I do beg your pardon. Um, and also a lightweight power unit, which I have brought up to respective ultimate and advanced. So you can start shading maneuverability into your builds if you want, although I have got the polished skin and the uprated engine. These need increasing and we'll see even better airspeed. I'm not going to do that this morning. Altitude performance, quite a good kick in uh, another thousand feet at maximum or optimum altitude. The P-51H, again, represents a pretty powerful aircraft, provided you can get on with machine guns. Yeah, exactly. And there is this, this there amongst some people, there is, Gleeks, uh, as you well know, a distinct split. There are those who don't mind machine guns. There are those who lo love machine guns because of their burst length. Let me see if I can get to 3D uh, game models. And there are those who just absolutely hate machine guns because they don't do enough damage quickly enough for them. Yeah, and then they don't they don't mind the overheating. World of Warplanes, just while we're waiting. USA Fighters. The P-51H Mustang. Okay. Why is that actually grayed out? Let's just have a look at the... Um, Fury. Right, okay, so the Fury has bottom guns. This is the tier nine aircraft that follows this one. The bottom guns on that are the same as the top guns on the P-51H. Allegedly, the overheat time on the Fury is 20 seconds. So you're getting 390 DPS potentially for 20 seconds. That's a lot of damage. The problem is, to deliver that kind of damage, you have to sit behind aircraft for a long time. And generally, that's what people don't like. And it is a problem. You certainly can't do it in a dogfight. So we're going to go and try and take the central uh, garrison again. Initially, there's not much I can do at the mining plants, until at least until bombers start flying in and I see them. Got a P-51H that isn't specialised against me. We have another P-51H. Guess what people are trying to do? They're trying to earn crates and a KO-93. Right, okay. All right, so there should be some heavies around here somewhere and they're a long way below me. Well, they were. One of them isn't, so I need to watch that. One thing I will say is possibly worth noting. I should be able to outturn the uh, XP-72. Oh, frankly, I've hit my controls to give me extra maneuverability. That was a silly thing to do. Completely unneeded against an XP-72. Um, 
if you are flying with, say, I don't know, 140 ping, worse than 140 ping, machine guns are going to be a real problem for you because your registration is going to be uh, rubbish. You'll have to be extremely short range to be able to deliver your DPS. Okay, right, so I am going to go to the plant. I'm going to try and take care of that bomber. We've got the central uh, garrison for the moment, but we've lost the two fl flanking ones, which is quite interesting. That would tend to suggest to me that the enemy fighters are trying to avoid com contact. wrong. I'll just keep going. I want to put distance between me and him before I come back. And now we've got 4,400. We will come back. Oh, he got fire on me. And that's actually... Dis oh, he's got two criticals. I want... Oh, there's a heavy that's come in. And you can see I've actually had two fires because I managed to use my fire extinguisher and was instantly set on fire again. Uh, that was unlucky. Uh, I had the P51H exactly where I wanted him, but the heavy came in. I hadn't noticed that suddenly they'd got a whole gaggle of aircraft come here. So we've lost that plant. That's bad news. I expected actually to be able to go in and take that. And uh, my two ground, ground attackers here, bots, are struggling to take that. So at the moment, it's not looking good. What to do? I'm going to try and take out this bomber and try and... Well, the plant's now been taken. We'll take out the bomber anyway, because we certainly can't afford for that to do any work here. Plenty of altitude performance. You can get up quite easily. It's not a human bomber. It should be all right. Okay, so we've turned one of the garrisons over. I need to lose one. What's that? Another bomber? Okay, well, we'll have to do the same then. I'll afford for these to get in and take this plant. But once we've done that, we really are going to have to go off and try and take a sector. Straighten the wings up. Just try and make sure we get everything landing that we can. There we go. Am I going to have to take the ground attackers too? The problem is here, I could get caught here just incessantly taking ground attackers and bombers. You know what, I'm going to leave it to try glow. Just hope that we do it. Let's try and get this set sector under control. We need to start getting points on the board. Okay, right, now we need to start pressurising the enemy. We need another sector. Let's try and get this one. We've got our first count off the plant, but we're over 200 points behind, and we'll still be 120 odd behind after we've got our count, and they've got a count in 1 minute 41. So we need to start pressurising, as I say. Okay, now can we exert pressure elsewhere? Do we need to do any defending of the plant? We need to defend the plant. First job. Fortunately, one of the ground attackers has gone into the centre. If they'd all concentrated on the plant, I'd be quite worried. If I can get these bombers down, We should be in a reasonable position to try to go on to win this battle. This bomb is flying towards me, so I will continue pursuing. 
as William was doing a good job on him. I just want to make sure that we don't lose this. Let's get that other bomber out. Then we need to go and try and take sectors and exert pressure again. I might go and try and take the garrison after we've got this bomber. Okay, good. Right. Or shall I try and defend this garrison? Get to that point where we want to knock people out of the game as well. Oh, we've lost the garrison. That's really bad news. We need to get that. To plant, I hope we do. Want to try and get this guy out. Hoping that's a critical. It's a wing. That's good news. He's running. Didn't get that. Didn't get that plant. In fact, it's gone the other way. That's bad news. We are going to have to try and take this uh, sector here. We've got the PATA out, which is good news. It's all getting a bit tight. Come on, guys, get me there. Feats don't fail me now. Just leave me along a bit lo longer, please, uh, Flack. Ugh, not enough, not quickly enough. Well, we tried. Uh, we got in a bad situation in the middle of that game. We took too long to take our plant. Um, we could never get theirs. And uh, yeah, the KR4, KR93 had a good game there. He, clearly what he's done and what he did to me was he's defended that plant. Um, and that's been the, rock, the bedrock of their victory there. Close-ish game though. It could have easily gone the other way if we'd been a bit quicker about it. And the P-51H, as you can see, had no problem knocking down bot bombers. I'm going to use the word advisedly there, bot bombers. Okay, so. I like the P-51H. And that was a good battle. Challenging. Might have made the wrong decision to go to the plant there. Perhaps I should have actually gone to take another sector. I should have left it to the team to defend the plant. It looked like in the end they had it well in hand. But I might have been wrong about that. If I'd gone off and got another sector, that would have been a much closer game. So there you go. Always try and review particularly your defeats and see if you could have done something better. And uh, potentially there, the wrong decision, certainly towards the end of the game, was going to the plant to protect it. There you go. Live and learn. So... We're now into the tier nine and we're into the jet era, the FJ-1 Fury. Let's go and have a look at it. Still Daka Daka, still machine guns. Sorry if you don't know what that means. Another step up in armament. Still the six 12.7s, uh, uh, this time the M3s though, and a 480 cumulative damage. And I've already trailed that these have 20 second burst. So it's 480 times 20 seconds in theory before you overheat. Survivability, quite a big step up this time. Uh, the way I've built it, well, I've lost a little bit at points, but I've still got 438. Airspeed 76, considerable step up, as you can see, as you would expect with the jet. 360 cruise speed, boost speed, getting on for certainly, uh, eight, certainly 80 miles an hour faster. 
Only eight seconds boost though, note that, so you need to use your boost more, more wisely. Maneuverability, pretty much the same as the P51H, the way I've built it, and I've got a pretty similar build on here again. Lightweight power unit, lightweight in frame, polished screen, and uprated engine with the gun sight. These all need at some point to uh, improving and then calibrating. I haven't got the materials to do that, and I don't want to do it on stream anyway. But as you can see, we're beginning to edge into a more maneuverable aircraft, but still needs to be flown like a high energy fighter. Uh, pick your targets carefully. And another step up, not so much this time, uh, in altitude performance. In fact, that's actually the P-51H we're looking at, but I think my build is pretty much the same on the FJ-1. And in fact, it is lightweight wing frame, uh, power, lightweight power unit, uprated engine and polished skin. So I've gone for the same philosophy here of blended speed with maneuverability. Straight wing um, fighter, let's take her up. And we've made good progress, so we'll be able to look at some other things towards the end of the stream. I hope. Yeah, gun ranges on machine guns are always generally low. It's just a feature. Got, got the mining plant, two command centers. We've had this map before, and again, I'm going to go for the command centers and see if this time we can actually do a bit better than we did previously, where we got absolutely pronounced by the enemy team. I took everything. Okay, so command center first. We have uh, the P-51H. We're going to have to watch out for that. Well, not so superior. I can't. I can ignore this aircraft. I've got to pay attention. ME-262 as well fast, don't want to let it come in and hit me unexpectedly if I can avoid it. Probably no point in sending bots. The bots have assi assignments right at the start of the game. And if you say, please go here, the one that's already going there will say, I am going there. Okay, that one came actually too close. This is one then. Okay, good. Have a bomber coming and have we shot down everything? Yeah, unfortunately, we have Seahawk down below, bomber up above. Over the Seahawk for first, I can get up to the bomber. I don't want to have the Seahawk suddenly change its assignment and come after me. Okay, there was actually another air defense aircraft. No, I'm not chasing the bomber. What I want... Well, first off, what I want is the ground attack, but then I want to attack the command centre. I'm going to try and send bots there now. Beginning to panic there. I'm going to ask again. We have to the Banshee, crippled by a lack of speed in real life. Decent aircraft in this game. MIG bait, basically the Banshee. Yeah, I need to pay attention to something else. It's just going to undercut that turn. Oops, kept the yaw on just slightly too long. I actually bobbed above the aircraft, but as you can see, I was able to outturn him with the yaw. 
just just beginning to find out what I can and can't do with the yaw. It's definitely improving my turns, but every now and then I make a mistake. That wasn't a critical one. Earlier in the stream, you saw me make a bad mistake in the B23. You need to get the yaw off before you're beginning to bring your guns to bear, otherwise you could find yourself overshooting. That's what I've found so far. Good, okay. Unfortunately, I think that's the last of the aircraft I can take here, so let's try and address the airfield. I'll not take any more damage. Put a plant, so it's kind of balanced. Actually, I've gone to the airfield. What I need to do is actually... Well, now I'm here, I better commit. But what I should have done is gone to our command centre. Well, that's my own aircraft I'm shooting. Oops, got confused with the targets. Okay, we have actually defended without my assistance. I'm just going to fly away from him for the moment. Make him lose interest or make him leave the sector. Either will do fine for me. And I do believe he's actually come for me. Okay. I've actually lost my bearings a bit here. He did actually come for me, and that's stupid. Because where I am, where he shot me down, can not benefit his team. And we lost that command centre. How on earth did we lose that in the end? Looked like we successfully defended that. So that's where we'll go. Mm. Clear out the airfield first. Deal with my blow, I think. He seems to be a bit of a threat. Also, he uh, chased me right across the map. I feel like uh, just reminding him that uh, I'll pop her etiquette. We'll leave him to come to me. And we'll feed on the XP-72. Really? Well, he really is being stupid. He could have been competitive there. He would have lost, in my opinion. We've lost the plant. That's not good. Are we going to take the other one? Probably. I do need to go and take this uh, command centre. Or we'll protect the other one. I'll protect the other one first. Come on, take that. Take that. Take that. Thanks for spawning me facing away from the enemy aircraft, which is nearly on my tail. That's a bit irritating when the game does that. Notice that's happening quite a lot now. You can spawn in in front of an enemy aircraft. Probably just bad luck. There we go. But more importantly, it spawned me 180 degrees away from where I wanted to be. Which was fine going to the command centre. As it happens, I don't need to anymore. Mind you, I said that last time. Did take that plant, that's good. So, in fact, actually, we can defend the airfield. I to look backwards first. Yeah, this is Triglo trying to get me again. Let's just fly away. So he's got engaged by someone else. 
fact, I think it's been shot down. Yeah. And what you're seeing there is what happens when you play a focus. Sometimes it works. Quite often you'll end up doing completely the wrong things in the battle. Mind you, he is trying to get damage, of course, so in a sense it doesn't really matter. Um, but you end up costing your team the game because you're pursuing the wrong objectives. So I don't recommend you do that. Yes, have an eye on what the humans are doing. Yes, if they're near you, make sure that they're not dressing you. Don't chase them all over the map. You're probably going to find that you're doing the wrong thing. And as a result of doing the wrong thing, as you saw at the end there, Trigo got himself addressed by three other aircraft. He only had eyes for me. If he had bothered to pay attention to what was going on around him, he may have kept his aircraft a bit longer. He didn't. We win. And you can see that the FJ is one in the right situation. Again, is a fine example of a high energy fighter, but with a bit of maneuverability coming in. And I had no problem throwing that around to very good effect. And so we come to the tier 10. So the FJ-1, if you know how to fly your high energy fighters and you can handle machine guns, I think it's a pretty good plane. It's not excellent, but it's certainly more than serviceable in my opinion. Um, however, you need to be able to handle machine guns. You need to have a firm grasp of the high energy fighting play style. And we've come to the tier 10. And this, in my opinion, is the crowning, crowning glory of the line. I think this is by far and away the best uh, aircraft in this line. Let's get it up in the background. We'll have a look at it in a moment. We need to put the F-86 pilot back in and get some idea of the figures. We'll actually get those figures up again because I noticed they didn't update. And here we go. Now, bear in mind, I've got a pretty well-trained pilot in here. But the gun armament doesn't change in terms of its effectiveness. You've got the same cannons, the same DPS. You might think that's bad news. I actually think the FJ-1 is pretty powerful at tier 9, and I don't have a problem with these guns at tier 10 either. I wouldn't take on an EF-131 flown by a human in it, to be fair, but I don't have a problem taking on bot bombers with this. Survivability does go a bit, 558. It's a slightly odd figure because of the way I've built the aircraft. Airspeed, massive jump. Oddly, slightly lower cruise speed, possibly because of the way I've built it, but look at the boost speed, 666. Again, though, you've only got seven seconds, in this case, seven seconds, it's normally eight. The way I've built it, I've lost a second's worth of boost. Maneuverability, huge increase. We're now turning, talking about being able to outturn virtually everything in the game except the Act 30. We're back to the P23 finally. Altitude performance, massive increase, really. This is what I call the ultimate anti-fighter fighter, but it's not restricted to that role. If you set the right targets, you will be able to do much more work against GAAs, heavies and bombers as well. You've got lots and lots of speed. You can outrun most MEP 1101s. You can outturn them for sure. So if you're in an MEP-1101 and you see one of these specialised against you, you need to be keeping an eye on this at all times within the game because this thing will outclass you if you let it. Superb aircraft and definitely my favourite in the line. And without further ado, let's get into it. Let's see what kind of a battle we get. Probably we'll get a dog's breakfast of uh, two EF-131s and uh, sit there going, well, I can't actually do very much, but there you go. We'll see how we get on. Siobhan, good morning. Sorry I haven't been paying attention to chat. Obviously, I've been explaining a lot. I can see you're chatting amongst yourselves about this line, which is great. Thank you very much for chatting and discussing it amongst yourselves. Okay, so the Meteor 1 Cliques is an excellent aircraft. And we're ahead of schedule. We've come in nicely. I did worry that I wouldn't be able to get through from the tier two to the tier 10 in one a two hour stream. Uh, I'm going to do it very nicely. In fact, even going to have a, a, an opportunity for a game afterwards. 
What's not to like? Can I thank every each and every one of you who've come who has come along this morning to watch this little bit of a different stream? Um, if you know about my Twitter account or my Discord, let me know whether you've enjoyed uh, me going through the entirety of a line on my Twitter. Yeah, Mubot is awake. Wasn't awake earlier. Okay, so if you want to leave comments about, yes, I enjoyed you going through the entirety of a line in the game, or no, please don't ever do that again. I hated it. Do let me know. Give me some feedback. Um, it is something different. I've enjoyed it because it's taken me away from the grind of specialization and made me fly other aircraft. Um, but if it's not popular, obviously I would do it on stream again. However, if you do like it, do be sure to leave a comment. For uh, let me know by whispers or even drop, drop something in chat now. Grant, actually, I hadn't, but that's a pretty good idea, isn't it? Xander, thank you for your comments. So you've appreciated uh, the, the run through. And if this is a, 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 an idea that people will appreciate, then what I will try and do is possibly do it in more detail. Uh, going to, I've only briefly explained the difference between the aircraft. Funnily enough, on this line, the incremental differences don't tend to make a massive difference tier to tier until you get to the tier 10, of course. But of course, the difference between the tier five Tomahawk and the tier eight Mustang, that's quite considerable. So you can see it building up. I suppose if you're familiar, uh, I know he's like Marmite, if you're familiar with Quickie Baby, I haven't gone into anything like the depth he does in his, uh, what are they called, tech tree? I don't know what he calls them. Anyway, when he's explaining the entirety of a tech tree, I haven't, oh, okay, I'm actually pleathering on and I haven't noticed I'm being shot. I nearly got covered by the heavy there as well. That would have been really. Did I just ram an aircraft out of existence? Okay, let's concentrate. So I haven't done a, a tech tree a showcase. That's what he calls it, isn't it? In anything like the depth that Picky Baby does on tanks, but uh, I would consider it if people like it. I'm definitely going to want to pick up repairs after this. Okay, I'll fly towards the middle. Okay, oh, I'm not having a very good time here. Flying around, talking, not really paying attention to what we're doing. Well, I'm not even attacking the airfield. What are we doing, team? Come on, get stuck in. <sighs> okay, I'm a bit distracted, I think. Oh, that's a bloody yak. What am I doing? <laughs> This is busy. Let's try and make it less busy. Wow, that's a badly flown yak, even for a bot. Lucky me. Keep. <laughs> I keep selecting a target only for something else to fly across my field of vision. That's quite amusing. Oh, and the one I chose to disengage from then came for me. Isn't that always the way? Got it. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we've lost both plants. They must have a bomber. Yeah, they've got an EF-131. What have we got? Well, we've got an EF-131 as well, so let's hope he's doing some work at their plant. Pick up repairs. I'm actually going to go to the plant because I can see there's a multi-roll there that I could potentially shoot down. And watch me just over speed past this FJ-1. Whoosh! Gone. Well, I was expecting us to take this plant. Okay, what 
what's up there. Let's go and take the heavy. Yeah, we're struggling here. We definitely need these plants as soon as possible. I might not be able to track down the javelin. I've got to hope he keeps going for the bomber. This will do it if I can kill him. Good. Right, what do we need to do now? Ooh, what we need to do is not get shot by the heavy. Oh, how did he get that last shot? Go on, turn with me. I'm going to go and repair the aircraft off this, so I'm going to use my boost to try and track this one down. Because it's got the kind of ordnance that can make a real difference to the plant. It's more of a heavy hi uh, hybrid multi roll. So I don't want this attacking this plant that we've just fought so hard to get. Yeah, that's a Gabreski plane, that, if you know how to fly it. Lots of ordnance, lots of good guns. Get it into the right situation, that's Gabreski material. Klaus, I saw you were here right first thing. Um, I know you popped away, but thank you for coming back. Hmm. I may as well not have bothered. Oh, of course. Well, I'm surprised the F-131's gone and taken it. What's that? Please don't be a yak. Oh, shoot, it is a yak, and I haven't got any boost. Okay, I've got away from it, but uh, irritatingly, he's stopping me from fighting, and I know he's just going to chase me now, isn't he? What can I do to make a difference? I can go to the centre while the axe uh, doing something else. I think. Unless I miss my guess, somebody's changed their aircraft. Yeah, their, their EF-131 has got more compo than our EF-131. Nothing I can do. There's too many of them. I need to shoot down aircraft and I can't because uh, I haven't got any cover. I think this guy's changed his aircraft. I can't do that because we haven't got an airfield any longer. The game's unfortunately almost lost. Their bomber has been far more effective than ours. That's the way it goes. Bombing. What can I say? Try and take this sector. But I think it's the game slipped away from us, which is a bit of a shame. So probably what we'll do is we'll throw in another game in the tier 10 and uh, finish the stream there. Let's see if we can get an attack in on the Yak when he's not paying attention. And if not, boost away. And we've now lost both plants. That oh, did get it. Okay. That's a tailor. Unfortunately, when you do get to tier 10, what you do find is that if you've got bombers, it's actually a t case of what do the bombers do and everything else is incidental and that's what happened there. I did take a bit long. Yeah, okay. So don't need to uh, apologise, class of it. Work comes first, puts the food on the table, the roof over your head. Okay, so the missions were finished yesterday. Thank you very much, Klaus. I've done all those. Got a little bit of extra gold. Well, I really needed gold, didn't I? Got a little bit of uh, extra free experience. Well, I really needed free experience, didn't I? Of course, that's the problem with being at the end of the game. The content out, out of boxes really doesn't uh, um, produce anything particularly interesting generally. So let's try that again. And this will be the final battle of the stream. So I'm just going to size up if anybody else is there that I can raid. Well, Okay. The answer is currently 
I'll just do a World of Warplanes play. A search certainly amongst my friends list. It's shaping up to be Lady Torpedo on World of War. Yeah, I'm the only World of Warplanes player on at the moment. So it's shaping up to be being Lady Torpedo in ships, unless you have a suggestion that you want to make to me. But before this game, I will say it afterwards as well. Each and every one of you have come here this morning. Thank you so much for being here. It's lovely to start the day with you all. Uh, and thank you for your time. Much appreciated. And I should, in theory, be streaming again tomorrow morning, probably Sunday morning as well, unless I take time off to do a video. Um, so look out for those. I'll announce them, announce them on my Twitter. I'll announce them on my Discord. And uh, I hope to see uh, some, if not all of you, again very soon after this stream finishes um, on another stream. This is not a great map, and um, we have an EF-131 against us, and we don't have a bomber on a map with two mining plants. Mm. Okay, well, we'll do what we can. Go to the middle, see if we can hold that, but frankly, from what I've just seen, because this guy was in the previous battle, if he doesn't clean up the two mining plants and win the game, I'll be very surprised. It may not work out that way. Let's put it, in terms of probability, I'd probably rate this as a 75% 75 chance for the enemy to win. It will depend what the bot heavies do. Maybe they'll latch on to the F131 all the time, if we're lucky. I should be able to deal with the MEP-110, but unfortunately that will be fairly incidental to the battle if the AF-131 is well flown. If it's badly flown, that will be a different matter. Let's see how it pans out. But personally, if it's, if I were in an AF-131, I'd be looking at this order of battle and going, yeah, 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 bring it on. Two mining plants, no enemy heavies. Yeah. Fill my boots time, is what I would think. Oh, who am I? Pew Pew Machine doing that roll? Okay, everything flew away from me. So, uh, rockets if I'm here. Can you believe those rockets all missed and yet he's still got my engine? Perhaps he was firing them at the same time. There we go. Okay. No, I don't want to fly like that. Well, he nearly did anyway. Use a bit of yaw to turn this round. Say hello to the MEP1101 for the first time. Say goodbye to him for the first time as well. Stop wiggling. And why aren't you on fire yet? <laughs> well, I've marked the kill on the calendar the day I managed to finally kill the J7. I thought I'd done enough to avoid that. That was stupid of me. Or was I hit by the heavy by any chance? I might have been hit by the heavy there, actually. And yeah, okay, so he has actually just flown out of range, so I was beginning to wonder about my hit registration there. Oh, actually, I think there is a problem with the hit registration. I looked down at the um, ground attacker because I thought he was out of range. He was out of my gun's range, but he has an extra 700 feet. So he wasn't out of range as far as he was concerned. 
So there's something flying into the plant. That's actually worth me going to try and um, take out. So a bit of a mistake uh, by me there. I actually mm, I applied my range to the BVP, forgetting that he has much better range. And as I was looking at the ground stack and thinking, when do I want to attack that? He shot me down. Silly mistake. But a reminder that the range on the guns of these uh, Tier 8 American fighters is pretty short, but that worked perfectly. So we say hello to the uh, MEP110 for a second time. And I did say that uh, this aircraft will deal with MEP110s very easily, uh, particularly unspecialized ones. So we say goodbye to the MEP110 for a second time. I need to defend this. Where's the heavy? Must be right up above me. Yeah, we've lost the other plants. We're actually doing all right. So yeah, I will try and defend. Oh, he's going to go down to the AA anyway, I'm sure. Oh, well, he didn't, so fine. Full health. Well, I may sh no, I'm not even going to shoot him as I go by because then I'll expose myself to his turret as we are. as we fly by, so I'm just going to ignore him. It's a sad state of affairs when you deliberately fly away from an aircraft because you can't afford to engage it, but there you go. Let's not lose focus. Good job I didn't lose focus. Please don't shoot me down, J7. So we said hello to the third. And he took my engine out. First shot, twice in a row. Do you see that? Is there any point in chasing this? Uh, I'm, I'd like to, but I, yeah, there goes the plant. Maybe we can get the other one fairly quickly, though. I'm going to ignore the um, bomber again if I can. We'll take the ground attacker out. He's going to get out of the sector, isn't he? Well, maybe not. Just fly away from him for a second. Five, four, three, two, one. And I've, unfortunately, that's allowed him to shoot my engine out. But he didn't get out of the sector. Good news. So, you know, my bot bombers may have a chance here of taking this. I've certainly set it up so that they've got every chance I could do with my engine back again. How many times has that I've lost my engine in this aircraft? In this battle? It doesn't normally happen. And we need to end this person's career, this bot's career. Perfect. So a bot, Grand Attacker. I'm probably going to go down to the AA here. Let's see if we can get this attack route first. Good. Okay, that's an unexpected win. So the lesson there is never give up. That didn't look very promising. That order of battle looked pretty bad, in fact, didn't it? But we've come out of it with a win.
as I expected, I dominated the MEP110. He wasn't specialised. Fighting up against a specialised F86A, going to come a cropper. He did twice. And I can't say anything bad about the EF131 player there. He's clearly done his work, but my bots have come up on trumps. And a good effort in the I211 there from the Agent 2236. Nice sniping. Cleeks would be proud of that. Good morning, TC Freer. Lovely to see you this morning. How are you? I hope things are beginning to brighten for you a little bit. So I'm just going to end by saying very briefly, I visited my father in his hosp in the hospital yesterday. Clinic, uh, physically, I'm pleased to say he looked really well. He's responded very well to the antibiotics. And clearly the infection has nowhere near as strong a hold on him as it had previously. There'll be more tests done today to see that his bug count has gone down. I expect it has. Mentally, hmm. Certainly able to engage in conversation with me and gave me sensible answers, but was also holding on to a couple of slightly odd, not very threatening or upsetting delusions. But interestingly, and here's the thing, he was previously in hospital in June and July, and he had this delusion that the night before, one, one day I visited him, the night before, he'd been out and gone to a dance in the Sergeant Smith, my father's ex-military, RAF specifically. He has exactly the same delusion yesterday, exactly the same delusion. And I've only ever seen him have this delusion in that hospital. Quite interesting. Anyway, it is the effect of being in an unfamiliar environment and he is also receiving antibiotics, which has an effect on dementia. So uh, I'm resting easy. I'll go and see him again on Saturday. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that is, as you soon realize, officially the end of the stream. And what a good stream it's been. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. That's not what I want to show you. That's what I want to show you. Okay, so Xander, you clearly have quite appreciated what is a tech tree stream, so I'll bear that in mind. I will probably consider doing some of these again. The opportunity was there because of the missions that are up this weekend. And now you've seen a little bit about the aircraft that you might be working towards that you can use to do those missions. And I hope you enjoyed it. I got to fly something, a whole line, which I have done for a long, long time. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But most of all, I've enjoyed everybody's company this morning. Now it's time for us to disperse, unfortunately. So let me go and check what's available to raid, who's available to raid. Okay, so I'm still the only uh, World of Warplanes player who's up um, amongst my friends list. Lady Torpeda, TC Freya, are you about to stream? Or have you just popped in to say hello? I'm going to set up a, a raid to Lady Torpeda um, uh, for a bit of ships. Who doesn't like a bit of ships? Well, actually, that question doesn't need answering. Okay, so... Let's just get that set up and then I'll say goodbye to you all properly. Okay, so the raid will occur after I've said cheerio and I'm going to say cheerio to you now. Whatever part of the day you're all in now, I hope the rest of it goes beautifully for you. I should be streaming again tomorrow morning. I hope to see some or indeed all of you again. Uh, then, if not, I hope to see all of you at not too distant a point in the future. But until then, thank you so much for being here. And uh, This is the Noble Q signing out with a raid to follow. Cheerio, everyone. Be safe. Mr. Number.